Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and WWDC 24 just took place yesterday, revealing iOS 18, iPad OS 18, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Today, I wanted to take a little time to talk about the devices supported by these updates, so let's forego any beating around the bush and get right to it. If your iPhone currently runs iOS 17, congrats! You will be able to get iOS 18 when it releases this fall, or you can download the iOS 18 beta much sooner. The developer beta is already out. I would highly recommend you do not do this, at least on your main devices, especially early on, betas tend to be be very unstable. As for Apple Intelligence, their big AI update, this will only be compatible in its fullest form with the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max, not even the iPhone 15, which is a bit surprising. Specifically, the Apple Intelligence requires A17 Pro chipsets or an M series chip that you would find in a MacBook or iPad. All in all, though, the oldest iPhones still supported are the 2018 iPhone XR, XS, and XS Max, all receiving iOS 18, which will bring them to at least seven years of software support with six major versions. iOS 19 will come fall 2025. I wouldn't expect compatibility for that, but it is possible. Either way, this is a great sign as the most recently discontinued iPhones in the 8, 8 Plus, and 10 only got six years of total major updates with five full iOS versions. But what about iPad OS 18? Well, there are some iPads losing out on the update this time around. These are the models getting the updates. 2018 and later iPad Pros, iPad Air 3rd Gen and later, iPad Mini 5th Gen and later, and then iPad 7th Gen and later. It's a bit odd the iPad 7 is getting iOS 18 while the iPad 6 is not, given they both have the same A10 Fusion chip. For perspective, this is the chipset that initially came with the iPhone 7 in 2016. Notably, the iPad 6 does only have 2 gigs of RAM versus 3 in the 7, so this might be the reason. I don't believe there are any devices running 2 gigs of RAM that will be getting iOS 18 or iPad OS 18 in any form. Whatever it comes down to, this list is not particularly surprising. The other iPads losing out on support are the 2017 iPad Pros, both the 12.9 inch and 10.5 inch variants. Again, overall, pretty standard stuff, and Apple Intelligence is only set to be fully compatible with iPads that have at least the M1 chipset. Now with all this in mind, I did want to discuss a little bit as to the reasoning behind some of this on Apple's part, as well as the precedents they're setting. For starters, seven years of full support for the iPhone XS and XR is really fantastic to see. And I do say seven years, because while we are talking about only six major iOS versions, being iOS 12 to 18, when you get iOS 18, you're still getting updates for the next year until iOS 19 actually comes out. That's just how Apple does things. So if the 10s and 10R don't get iOS 19, which they probably won't, we're still talking about having the latest update from September 2018 all the way to September 2025. Seven years. That's certainly nothing to scoff at. The iPhone 6S also got seven years, iOS 9 to iOS 15, but Apple sort of surprisingly gave the iPhone 7 to also only iOS 15, making for six years. And then the iPhone 8 and 10 from 2017 got to iOS 16, making for again six years. There will be no iPhone stuck on iOS 17 forever, similar to how no iPhone ended its life on iOS 13 or 14. While I would consider it unlikely for the iPhone XS and XR to get iOS 19, I actually wouldn't count it out completely. While eight years would be a new record for any smartphone period, it does make sense they might do this, since the 2018 iPad Pro that dramatically shook up the iPad design has the A12 chip, and personally I would expect to get iPad OS 19, it might not, but it wouldn't surprise me if it did, and the iPhone XS and XR also have the A12 chipset. Now, it's not as if Apple has always had consistency with which chips get their updates. They separated iOS and iPadOS for a reason. For example, the iPad 5, which had the A9 chipset, the same as in the 6S, got to iPadOS 16, whereas the iPhone 6S itself, as well as the iPhone 7 with its A10, only got to iOS 15. Doesn't make a lot of sense on paper, but that's just how Apple's been doing things. Of course, you don't necessarily get all the latest features on iPad if you are getting those updates, but still, it was a bit of an odd choice that I've never fully understood. Basically, Apple can be a bit of a mess when setting expectations for software updates. Their patterns are all over the place. But they're definitely the best company historically with supporting mobile devices for longer. Odds are your battery will be a much bigger issue before losing out on updates ever is. And to add to this, losing out on the newest version of iPadOS or iOS is not exactly a death sentence. Apps tend to retroactively support iOS versions for a few years, sometimes even longer. And even when that is no longer the case, Apple does allow you to download the latest compatible version if you have installed the app before. Plus, even better, security updates tend to hit for multiple years onwards, even on older iOS versions. The 2013 iPhone 5S most recently got an update January 2023 as an example. Basically, Apple remains king of mobile device support, and this is not going to change anytime soon. But yeah, seven years for the iPhone XR and XS. Pretty impressive, and same goes for all the iPads being supported as well. Rip to any of you on one of the three iPads losing out, but again, not a death sentence. It's not as if your iPad will be suddenly 
completely useless, it just won't get some of the newest features. All in all, just wanted to make a quick video on this to hopefully bolster discussion and inform anyone unsure if they'd be getting the new updates. Any of you on the 10R or the 10S? You looking forward to iOS 18? Are you on one of the iPads losing out on support? What feature do you want most from iOS 18? Make sure you let me know in the comments down below. I do think it's a bit of a pity a lot of the AI stuff isn't coming to phones lesser than the 15 Pro. That's a bit surprising, but if Apple really is dedicated to running the majority of this AI stuff locally on the device, it does make sense, as the other iPhones just probably don't have the processing power to do it. I'm also pretty skeptical of all the AI stuff as a whole, but who knows, if anyone's going to make it good, Apple would be a solid bet. If you found this video helpful or interesting, please hit that like button and consider subscribing for more tech content. Thank you so much for watching. I am Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.